What else is it about you know, people in the medical or the healthcare field, why this financial planning becomes so important? It's, it's sort of unique in that you graduate and then you know, in medicine especially, you're just like immediately at the top of your earnings potential. It's not like there's a corporate ladder that you're really climbing up, maybe incrementally. Same thing for many other different professions in the healthcare space. Like, what else do you need to take into account when it comes to putting together a financial plan for those types of clients? I think it really comes down to, you know, early on we're dealing with debt management and making sure that lifestyle doesn't accelerate too quickly so you can take care of the debt. Um, two, three hundred thousand is very normal for people coming out of the medical professions, whether it's, you know, doctors or dentists. Guilty. Yeah. Yep. And the banks are happy to lend them a ton of money. I think it makes you a client for life usually uh, oh, with God. the banks. Um, but really what you end up dealing with is first accelerating that debt repayment, but you've often deferred other parts of your life, family, owning a home, that kind of stuff. So I think early on, it sort of sets a pathway of how do you achieve all these goals just because you're making good money, you're still saddled with a fair bit of debt. So it's how do we, you know, work on those goals, move you forward on these different objectives in the short term. You know, it doesn't take that long um, for most to get out of that debt. And then it becomes what is the right way to tackle building wealth, usually in corporation, you get that deferral. So you take out what you need, whether it's in salary or dividends, retain the rest in the corporation, start investing it there. So I want to chat more about the incorporation because that piece is like very commonly cited as one of the most critical. I have yet to actually incorporate, so I've got a lot to learn there. Uh, I mean, right up front when you're like engaging with a financial planner or somebody in this space, you know, fees is sort of that very first thing that goes through your mind of like, how do I set this up? What's beneficial? What, what are the differences there between you know, the assets under management and having a percentage versus a flat fee? In what case is each of those more advantageous to the client? So with those situations, you have a couple different ways you can work with people. So I will do fee-based planning where it's just advice only. So if you want to do self-directed, you know, manage your own affairs, whether it's stocks or rental, then you get access to the advice and we do a detailed plan and then we would meet you know, once a year or every other year depending on your needs and how frequently you want to kind of make sure we're on track to where you're trying to go. Um, when it comes to the fees, so fees in this industry, you have varying levels of disclosure. Some statements are very difficult to still make out how much you're paying in investment fees. So for us, what we would show is a beginning balance, any contributions, withdrawals, uh, capital gains or growth in the, in the securities, and then show the fees plain right on the statement, getting to your ending balance. And we reconcile that on current quarter, year to date, and since inception. So there's never any confusion or uh, lack of clarity, I guess, when it comes to what you're paying. Um, with that, there's often embedded fees. So depending on the platform you're working on off of, you can have embedded fees in some of the managed products that are being offered. So the way we do it is we have our fees are plainly disclosed and then we have a MER that's tied to the portfolio that is capped at 45 basis points and can fluctuate depending on what's in the portfolio at any given time. And when it comes to the setting up the comprehensive financial plan, like what's even the ballpark people should be looking at in terms of fees? For doing a fee-based plan? Yeah. Uh, I would say for most people with businesses or, or a bit more complex structure, you know, you're somewhere in that $7,000 range. Um, it can take anywhere from, you know, 20 to 30 hours, depending on what we're dealing with. Um, it's important to make sure when you're doing that, uh, you know, we're also engaging other professionals, so your lawyers, your accountants. So when we make recommendations, we want to make sure that your other advisors are on the same page. And then on the other half of fees is sort of quality, right? So of course you evaluate any purchase, that's sort of the trade-off is, you know, price versus product. When it comes to like engaging with a financial professional, how do you even gauge that? Like how do you know if the person you're signing up with is knowledgeable and credible or, you know, getting what they say done? Well, I think 
you know, on the investment side, you're looking for designations such as the CFA or CIM for portfolio managers. Uh, when it comes to planning, you know, do they have a CFP, Certified Financial Planner? Uh, I think the other thing is ex experience. And I think as professionals, we also need to know when we're getting out of our wheelhouse and bringing in other people or bringing in other experts. So, uh, you know, if you run into something that you don't have experience with, I think it's important to bring in other professionals to help or refer it out. That, that openness to bring in the rest of the team. Correct. Are, are there any like red flags that you would say are like an immediate like, okay, maybe get a second opinion or you know even do another interview with somebody? It's almost like hiring somebody for a job, right? You want to make sure you're joining the, the right team. Yeah, and I think with respect to figuring out the right fit, I think it really comes down to, you know, when, when you've been in this industry for 14, 15 years, a lot of the people I work with, I've been working with them from the very beginning. And, and I always say to people in our introductory meetings, you know, we're not going to be the right fit for everybody and that's okay. What we want to find is people who we align well with in terms of what we deliver, how we want to work with you, and if it's a good fit, then we can go from there. And it starts, I think, the relationship on the right foot. Having someone who's working with you, who maybe wasn't totally convinced it's the right fit, it's never really going to work out well for everybody probably in that case. So I think it's just best sometimes to, to make sure that the person you're working with, you're comfortable with. And I think it's also important to make sure that not just you, but also your spouse, if you have one, is on the same page. I think you need to have a, uh, alignment of feeling comfortable with who you're working with. And then on the side of transparency, I know you mentioned that as being one of those like really critical elements to the relationship. What should you be looking for in terms of transparency coming from the financial professional? Well, I think disclosure of fees, conflicts of interest. So if there is a conflict of interest, so for example, you know, the investment fees are very plainly disclosed, disclosed sorry. but what you will have is, you know, if there's life insurance, life insurance does come with commissions and those commissions can be very you know, significant. Doesn't mean it's not necessarily a good product or good solution that helps you achieve your goals, but being aware of that so that you're informed of where those potential conflicts are, uh, of interest arise. So. Okay, so just like making sure you have those conversations up front. Ask the questions. Is there any hidden fees? Is there any commissions? I mean, there's nothing wrong with ask, asking that question. Yeah, yeah, it might be a little uncomfortable, but, but make it sure might you be, do it. But, but if the person is, is not trying to hide it in the first place and, and they disclose it, this shouldn't be a complicated conversation. Risk management. Yeah, I've been sort of told the, the mantra of your young person early in your career, Invincible. more risk equals more money later. Yeah, is it... What's your approach to that? So risk management, I think early on when you think about as a physician, the, you know, especially right out of school, your biggest asset is your ability to earn money. It's not your home, your car, it's, it's you. So protecting your earning potential through things like disability insurance, um, building that foundation. When it comes to the investment side, it's about diversifying. So. You know, it's um, it's common, I guess, to want to, you know, have those water cooler conversations, so to speak, and, and chase home runs. But I think where you find a lot of wealth is created over the long term, if you have good earnings ability, it's more about doing the right things consistently, which is saving, being disciplined with how you deploy capital, as in, you know, are we trying to hit home runs or are we just trying to hit singles and doubles and are we happy with, you know, earning a reasonable rate of return but protecting the wealth that we have created. I'm Dr. Jordan Valrath, and you've been watching Cherry Live, brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this, or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network.